Dakshin Bajrangi was born into the Chara tribe, a community tagged by the British as criminals. An extremely difficult upbringing, economic hardships, illiterate parents, and the tag of being a Chara made life extremely difficult at school as well. Against all odds, Dakshin used his work as an actor and activist to empower other Charas, using the powerful medium of theater to demand their basic right to a dignified life and livelihood. Dakshin's theatre group continues to perform street plays within the community and in both urban and rural public spaces. Their work has moved beyond only lobbying for the interest of his community. It now speaks up for all those who are silenced in the state of Gujarat. A theatre practitioner, filmmaker, academic, human rights campaigner, he straddles his multiple roles with an effortless ease and an uncommon grace. Asya's interest in literature and language was inspired by her grandfather, a Kashmiri poet. Growing up in Kashmir, she had limited choices initially choosing medicine, but feeling trapped as she was unable to leave Baramula to pursue her dreams. She enrolled for a B.Ed. degree as she wanted to teach. Moved by what the students experienced as they were not taught how to understand or use language effectively. After her degree at Oxford, she taught in a remote village school in Kashmir for two years, using teaching methods she had learnt in England. She is currently Head of Department of English at Government Baramula College, where in addition to teaching, she organises debates, seminars and lectures by eminent scholars from within the valley and beyond. She is also the founding member of the Kashmir Centre for Art culture and languages and works for the rejuvenation of marginalized languages and regional art forms. Deepak was born into the Jogi or Nath community, traditionally known as the Gypsies of India. His gutsy mother, herself a midwife, raised him single-handedly after his father abandoned them when Deepak was very young. While he was in school, he was inspired by development workers at the National Service Scheme Integration Camp in Shivpuri, Madhya Pradesh. He felt a compelling urge to do something for his village and community. Deepak was only 19 when he was selected for an IFP fellowship. Upon his return to India, Deepak formed the Sham Sanskrit Seva Samiti in Chitwari, Rajasthan. The 4,200 strong organization with microfinance as its pivot has facilitated loan dispersals for over 3,000 rural women and has a turnover of over 1 crore rupees. His work now involves entire communities including children, youth and men. Deepak works day and night for the advancement of those living on the margins. What really excites him is the impact that micro-insurance 
a relatively new area, can have within the Indian rural context. Brought up by a single mother in provincial Mao, Madhya Pradesh, Belu had her first glimpse into the world of creativity and idealism at her school, where she participated in debates and cultural events, interacting with journalists and writers. She founded the Deen Bandhu Samajik Sanstha along with her husband Rajiv. Together they worked tirelessly for the urban poor and Belu's career moved towards advocacy and campaigning. Simultaneously, she studied for a bachelor's in law in Indore. Things became hard to manage after she lost her husband in 2005. With a young son to look after, Belu went back to teach at her old law college. After her studies in the UK, Belu has returned to her life's mission to work on urban poverty issues and housing rights. Her improved writings and skills in advocacy, along with connections made during her international experience, have propelled her forward and filled her with hope for the future. The Deen Bandhu Samajik Sanstha, attracting its old partnerships and developing new collaborations to emerge as a social intellectual and activism hub in Indore. Beneath was born within the Munda Adivasi community in Ranchi, Jharkhand. As a young man in the early 90s, he became interested and involved in the fight for the rights of the underprivileged. Vineet worked as an activist in the violent coal belt of Bihar and Jharkhand. Moved by the plight of Adivasis at the hands of the Mafia, he helped form a union for domestic workers and spearheaded several people's movements. After his studies in Norway, Beneath returned to work with the Bindrai Institute of Research Study and Action in Jharkhand, while continuing his work as an independent researcher and activist. Through his writing, research and advocacy, he continues to battle against issues of displacement, dispossession and loss of livelihoods, language and cultural identity issues of the indigenous people of India.